Hey, this is Writer's Row. I'm DC Wrighthammer, and I have a special guest on the show tonight. I'll let her introduce herself. Hi, I'm Amanda Stockton, at Batwamanda. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you like the content I've been putting out on Writer's Row, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel down below. And if you have any questions or comments for Amanda or myself, make sure to put those in the comments down below as well. Um, the topic this week, I wanted to talk about writers that have other talents, uh, because I think that that is the majority of writing community, that we all write, but that's not the only things we like to do, not the only things we're good at. Um, in some cases, we're better at other things than we are at writing. Maybe this one. Um, but I wanted to bring Amanda on. She is uh, a prominent member of writing community and... Um, she has some other talents that we'll get into. Number first, before we do any of that, uh, Amanda, can you go ahead and just introduce yourself, uh, where you're at in your, your writing career? Uh, just what do you want people to know about yourself? Um, for writing, I've got a short story published in Anthology with other wonderful people in the writing community and Autumn Nights. It was a really fun thing to do. Um, as far as other projects, I've got, um, I'm in editing, revising endlessly in a epic fantasy novel, book one of plan four. Um, and I'm working on a couple other little projects for writing as well. Very cool. Um, and so let's dig right in. Um, mm -hmm. This episode is about other, so we, we can talk about writing, we're going to work it in, but I've noticed on, on Twitter, you've got some other talents um, that really catch the eye. So why don't you tell us a little bit about some of the other things that you do outside of writing? Well, I do visual art. I use a variety of different things. I do charcoal. I do acrylic paints. I've started recently doing gouache paint, which I'm actually really loving. That is a very regular response when I say that word. <laughs> No, <laughs> nobody knows what gouache is. It's basically just opaque watercolor. So it's like watercolor tends to be a lot more like thinner, watery. Gouache is thicker, more milky. And so it's, it. But it's not like oil paints, right? It's not right. quite. Right. No, it's not like oil. Um, gouache, it can be reactivated with water. Okay. And so you can continue to mess with it even after it dries very cool yeah. uh so so tell us a little bit about how so and, and i'm going to be streaming pics if i haven't already on the youtube channel you're going to see some of her work she sent me some of the really cool pieces um tell us a little bit about how art has maybe influenced your writing career and maybe vice versa how writing maybe influences your art and just kind of walk us through that um, for the most part, what I think is visual art and writing, they really are basically the same thing in process. It's just like using a different medium. You're still working from a rough draft, a rough sketch, a simple idea in your head, and then you have to kind of go in and put in layers and refine your edges and make it clean and crispy and pretty. Um, so that's kind of one of those things where I think – Visual art is helping my writing a little bit better because it's teaching me to be a little more forgiving of my beginning processes. <laughs> um, and then I think one of the best pieces of advice I had heard was actually at one of those paint nights where you go to a bar and you drink and you do everybody in the room paints the same thing. Sure. Um, the instructor lady um, actually said, one of the important things to remember when you're making art is nobody's ever going to be this close to it again. Hmm. Cause when you're painting something, you're like this close. And right. so you see all those little minor in impurities in what you're working on. But when everybody comes to look at it and it's hanging on a wall, you're going to be a lot further away. And it's, I think the same thing ties into writing because when you're making something, you're very, very close to it. Mm -hmm. And, do you finally release it nobody else is going to be nobody's going to know exactly the vision that you had in your head nobody's going to be as close to it as you are and so you got to learn when is when to just yeah. stop editing 
and be okay. Yeah, the <laughs> self-revising. I did a video on that uh, probably a month ago, or I can't remember what it was. Either way, basically saying if you paint a good picture or if you tell a good story, people care a lot less about your techniques. They care a lot less about you following some prescribed rules right. than, um, you know, if you came in and painted by numbers, like, and you just fit the paint by numbers uh, to a T, you did it exactly perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with paint by numbers. I'm saying that someone can come in and do something completely freehand that is absolutely original and you're not going to get that exact piece from another person. People can do copies, they can get close, but it's just not quite the same. Mm -hmm. um, whereas if you're painting by numbers, that is for mass consumption. That's for anybody to really just kind of do. And that's right. great. And I think that that's, there's a, a place for that. Mm -hmm. In writing, I think, especially as independent authors, um, you can get obsessed with perfection. You can get obsessed with, is my grammar perfect everywhere? And, oh my gosh, what if I miss this or that? And I even emphasized, and I mentioned on the episode, that uh, in my first novel, there are still at least 33 errors that I am firmly aware of um, <laughs> that some, reader, some readers have actually pointed them out to me, like, especially in writing community, they're, they're nice people. They'll reach out and DM and be like, hey, I liked your book. Oh, by the way, I have this list of issues that I found. Thank you. You are helping me edit my book. I appreciate that. Others are not going to respond that way, but that I do appreciate. Um, but I can imagine that with, with painting and drawing and sketching that mm -hmm. the average person is just going to take it all in. They're not going to see where you might have like an eraser smudge. They're not going to see any of the little things. They're going to see the big piece and they're going to be taken aback by that. Right. And so, um, so yeah, so in terms of painting, because it is such a visual thing, like you can just move on. Like you can, like, is that a struggle for you? Just, you know, the little areas that you, oh, I remember struggling in that corner. Yes. You can just move on. It's really, really difficult. Something I'm still trying to do. Like there's some pieces where I'm like, no, I hated this, but then I post it and people are like, no. That's good. I'm seeing and I'm focusing on the one thing that I knew how I wanted it to look and it doesn't look that way. And that's all that I can see. Sure. And knowing when to just be like, it's, it's okay. It's yep. okay to walk away and just learn something from this one and apply it to the next one. And have you ever found yourself, whether it's writing or the visual arts, where you just can't, you have to stop and go do the other one like you just, I can't draw today. I have to write or writing is I have to give that up. I can't do that. Yes, absolutely. There are some days when I try to sketch something and I can't like nothing. My hands just like have gone stupid and they don't work anymore. And it does it. Yeah. Nothing. It's like when you sit there at a computer and you just stare at the blinking cursor sitting there and just calling you out. It happens with visual works quite often. Yeah. Yeah. I, for me, uh, so if people have watched any recent videos, I, I'm not currently writing fiction right now. But my thing was, I would write the same sentence like 150 times and delete it and change it. And like, it would take me a good 15 or 20 minutes to be like, yeah, I'm probably not going to get any writing done today. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, early on in my writing career, I would just take breaks. Um, and then I started to switch to one of my other talents, I like to mix music. So I, was, I would actually start mixing musical pieces just to give myself a creative outlet. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the last year, it's been editing videos for Writer's Row. And that has really taken over my creative outlet. I'm sort of like, I published two books. I'm good for a little bit. Let <laughs> me get to a happy place again. Uh, but I really need to just, you know, I have to break up. You know, if you love something, you have to give it up. You know, you have to let it go. And if it comes back, then it was meant to be. Right. If not, we'll see. So, um, but I, I, I think that's interesting that you, you kind of have, sometimes you have to give up one and just think about the other. Um, yes. And so how has, so you're a creator, an independent creator. 
Um, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about how shelter in place or stay at home has kind of affected uh, everyone. And so tell us how that's been affecting you as a creator, how it's, you know, from the um, creative side, and then maybe from the business side, we can get to that in a little bit. So it's kind of like this double-edged thing where at stay at home, you have all the time in the world, allegedly. Um, but at the same time, it's like there's extra pressure. Like I should be constantly creating because I'm home and I can't be distracted by outside things. And it's really hard mentally to detach from the outside and everything that's happening mm -hmm. and just come inside and get focused on any one thing for a, any period of time. Um, being shelter at home, it's kind of this weird thing because in a way it's not really all that new to me because stay at home mom, I sure. pretty much lived like this for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so really it's seeing, I've been seeing a lot more art being produced. Instagram feed is filled with these tons of artists that are creating things that are influenced by what's happening. And I think seeing more influx is in a way inspiring mm -hmm. for creative stuff for my writing. I don't know, like the things that I'm writing on right now are all about being trapped and confined. And I'm like wanting to get away from that. <laughs> you know, I don't want to sit here and think about being constantly caged in, which is where my characters pretty much all are right now. Um, well, and I think, uh, yeah, I think it's interesting because, and I, I actually want to do a video on this, so spoiler for anyone who's watching this far in, but <laughs> how is this going to affect, like, claustrophobia horror, that, like, theme of feeling trapped, um, that, that genre, that subgenre, um, drama where you can't leave a place, like, is that going to make sales or appeal in that drop? Is that going to... Are people going to not want to write, even want to write in that and create things in that? Are, and I think you're going to have the other extreme of people that are just, that's their shtick now for the rest, you know, for a long time is, um, you know, remember COVID-19, remember being, you know, for some people you're stuck for, for essential workers, you're not stuck. You're seeing the world and how it's changing every day. And you get these sort of like two extremes with different people. Um, so, so I think it's really interesting. I think, um, my creative outlet that, ha uh, you know, I've ebbed and flowed, but, but YouTube and creating these videos and partly because it's a connection with other people. Um, if I have a guest on like yourself, um, it's great to connect with others, especially across the country who are, who, you know, normally the Pacific Northwest, the Midwest doesn't have a whole lot in common with. But right now we're all kind of like, you know, it's all like level playing field. We're all kind of experiencing something similar. And so um, doing this show, being able to reach out to people, being able to connect with others, even if I don't have a guest, if it's just me kind of vlogging about a topic, um, I've been able to do that fairly successfully and I feel good about it and I look forward to it. And I know others are struggling creatively and so, you know, I wanted to make this episode, let's talk about the different creative outlets we have and let's figure out a way to, to foster them, to bring them out, even in times when we don't feel like we necessarily are super excited about doing them. Yeah. So with that said, the business side of creating, I know that you just launched, did you launch a sticker, uh, yeah. a, a sticker thing? I don't even know what it is. Um, I launched, it's called Dead Girl Society. It's a, like a, a series that I'm kind of working on, um, where it's all really vibrant and bright feminine power sort of deal. And I've got, uh, three flagship girls available in the sticker pack in my shop. It, that's going to be linked down below for sure. And, you know, people are struggling right now. Times are tough. Um, but I think one of the things we can do is try to support each other the best we can. Uh, writing community is a great place for that. We share each other's books. So we buy each other's books. We, 
read and review them. But um, in this case, you can get some really cool looking stickers. I've seen them and I think, do I have some pictures? I think I have a picture of one or two of them that I'm gonna be able to share. Yeah, at least one. And there's gonna be links down below. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, take a look. Um, order from independent creators as much as you can, support each other. Uh, and so there'll definitely be a link down below for all of those things. Um, any parting words, uh, Amanda, before we, we go ahead and wrap it up? <laughs> uh, I think what you're doing is really great because especially right now, you're like driving all this connection and we're all so isolated and closed off. <laughs> it's, it's really great that I actually could have talked to another person. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> You know, and even a couple of weeks ago, we were with some friends and we played uh, Cards Against Humanity or whatever that was online. That, like, we have to do those things to protect our humanity, to, uh, and, and also meet new people. Like, if you forget, like, yeah, you need to keep your, your close-knit people. You need to keep track of them and Zoom with them. But, you know, meet new people, um, expand, you know, use this time to... Uh, get out of your shell instead of a lot of us, you know, we want to be defensive and things like that. Yeah, it's really easy to fall into the hole and and forget to recharge yourself by being social and actually making the time and finding the resources to do that. Yeah, well, and I'm an introvert. I think that, that might surprise some people, but I'm actually an introvert. Um, and I need people to recharge but then I also need to recharge after I've been with people. So there's a balance. So, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to balance it out. Um, yes. Amanda, I really appreciate you coming on. Um, you're always going to be welcome on Writer's Row. Um, and, um, yeah, so go ahead. You can say goodbye to people, and then I'll wrap it up. Well, thank you for having me. Absolutely. So <laughs> and Writer's Row watchers, thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time.